Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. A shooting on Friday led to the detention of a teenager. The details just ahead. And President Biden, just months away from leaving office, announces a pardon he previously said he wouldn't grant. Plus, new warnings on single-use plastics. What preliminary research says about reusing containers made for a single use. And all thanks to the help of a couple of cold fronts that came through us last week. We're looking at some more lovely fall weather with another front coming on Thursday. We'll look at that. But what does that mean? The rain chances have finally returned. We'll take a look at all of that in the weather coming up. Coming up in sports, we hear from Calhoun head coach Whitaker about the loss against Lavernia. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning, Crossroads, and happy Monday and December. That's right. We've started December, started another week, and finally, Carolina, it looks like fall time, and it actually looks like December. It's feeling like or, it. Yeah, feeling ish. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ish. We haven't seen all the Christmas lights just yet, but I can guarantee you they're going to start coming out here real soon. That's right, and with Christmas as a reminder, today is Cyber Monday. If you haven't been able to get all your Christmas shopping done, today may be your final chance to get make your order, so it makes it in time. That's right. Get that, all that stuff on sale before it's too late. In fact, get all. I might recommend getting some sweaters and jackets on the on that on that uh, maybe Christmas list because we're going to be cooling down here real soon. Not yet. In fact, we're actually already a little bit cool out there this morning. Look at that pretty sunrise coming over Victoria, though. But if you could go see that sunrise, like I was just saying, a bit chilly out there, sitting at 47 degrees. All thanks to this front that came through the last couple days, last few days actually. A little bit humid out there as well. Humidity is at 86 percent, but not really high enough to see fog, so don't have to worry about that. But like I was just saying. A bit chilly out there. All of us in the upper 40s and low 50s. Some of uh, some of us in the mid and low 40s, especially in our northern counties, thanks to that northerly wind. Along the coast, you are in the upper 50s and low 60s because you're right next to that warm 60 degree water. But looking at your satellite this morning, you may have just saw right there on the camera pretty clear out there. A couple clouds out there. Why am I showing you the satellite? Because today is going to be the last day of a little bit of sunshine before this tropical low that's right off of our coast brings us some cloud cover and some rain chances from the rest this week. And look at that later because this morning, if you're sending your kids out the door, grab that jacket for the morning, but it's going to be a beautiful afternoon. We're looking at the details on that coming up next. A teen is hospitalized and another teen arrested after a shooting at a Victoria apartment complex Friday. Police responded to the 2500 block of Mockingbird Lane around 140 Friday afternoon after reports of gunfire. When they arrived, they found a 17 year old with a gunshot wound. Around 8 Friday night, police served a search warrant at a house in the 500 block of North Brownson in connection with the shooting. A 16 year old was then placed in custody and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He's being held in the Victoria County Juvenile Detention Center. Just before 1 p.m. on Monday, November 25th, $30,000 was stolen from a man in Ganado. The victim, the owner of J&J Stores, was followed from a Sugarland bank by a suspect in a white Mazda. After pulling up behind his truck, the suspect in an all-white hoodie stole the bag of money while the victim was inside the store. Ganado police tracked the suspects using street cameras, identifying the car as a rental from Houston. This type of crime known as jugging has been reported multiple times recently in Fort Bend County. Authorities are still investigating. Victoria County commissioners will meet today at 10 a.m. Here are some items from their agenda. They'll hear a presentation regarding the Texas Property Assess Clean Energy Program. They'll also consider several requests for proposals, design, build services for the inpatient mental health facility. And they'll consider approval for the relocation of animal services. They meet at 115 Bridge Street on the second floor in the courthouse, uh, excuse me, of the courthouse in room 241. Hunter Biden is vowing to help others struggling with addiction after receiving a full pardon from his father. President Joe Biden says he changed his mind about clemency for his son because he thinks politics has caused a miscarriage of justice. Hunter Biden is convicted of a firearm charge and has pled guilty to tax crimes. The counts against him carry a maximum sentence of 42 years in prison. Republicans are blasting the pardon and it's unlikely to go over well with Democrats either. We'll go to Washington for more later. Scientists are sounding the alarm on some of the plastic items most of us use every day. They say we could be endangering our health by repeatedly reusing containers that are only meant to be used once. 
refilling that plastic water bottle you bought from the convenience store or reusing the takeout container from last night's dinner. Researchers say you may want to think twice. These single-use plastics, if they're used over and over and over again, the risk of leaching out certain chemicals and exposure to microplastics increases as you use these products, which are intended to only be used one time. We've seen the recent headlines. The Washington Post declaring reusing plastic water bottles and to-go containers. Scientists say that's a bad idea. And the Atlantic saying throw out your black plastic spatula. They cite various studies that suggest harmful chemicals, including carcinogens and plastic bits, are leaching into your food. Studies suggest even washing sturdier, reusable plastic containers on the hot cycle in the dishwasher could be hazardous. But experts warn this research is only preliminary. Me personally, I have not thrown out every plastic item in the house. You do what you can, and I'm not telling everyone in America to throw out every single plastic item in their house either. I do want to emphasize that it is nearly impossible to get away from microplastics. It is in our soil, it is in the air, it's in clothing fibers, it's manufactured in so many different things, food casings, it really is everywhere. The big takeaway amid all this concern? Experts say try to limit how much plastic you use by using glass containers instead and drinking from metal straws instead of plastic. The research that is still developing in the area of plastics and the safety of microplastics is still ongoing. So right now, experts are recommending to limit plastic use where you can and use things as directed. So if something is directed to be a single-use product, it should be used that way. At the same time, global talks about how to reduce plastic pollution just collapsed overnight. Representatives from 170 countries, including the U.S., couldn't agree on how to dial back plastic production. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. President-elect Donald Trump has announced his picks for FBI director and DEA administrator. Trump taps Kashyap Kash Patel to serve as director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The 44-year-old has little significant experience in federal law enforcement and has earned a reputation as the ultimate Trump loyalist and calling for a purge of perceived Trump enemies from the FBI. The president-elect also announcing that he would choose Florida Sheriff Chad Cronister to serve as the administrator for the Drug Enforcement Agency. Remember to follow us on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Let's go look at our clock up here. It is 638 on our Monday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up next on 25 News Now Sunrise. We take a look at what's in store for Victorians this holiday season. With less than 50 days to go in his presidency, President Biden has pardoned his son, Hunter. I'm Christiane Cordero with the details from Washington. And also coming up next after the break in the full forecast, it's going to be another cool day all across beautiful Texas. I'll tell you how nice I think it's going to be near you. But coming up later on sunrise, we're going to take a look at those, or those rain chances because everything's going to change real soon. Well, good morning, Crossroads. You're looking live in Cuero. And look at that. As the sun's starting to come up, you got some pretty colors out there. Got some blue. It looks like a little bit purple as well. But right now, if you're to go see that sunrise a tad bit chilly, I might recommend a jacket sitting at a little bit chilly 44. And Cuero right now, that's a little bit chilly to me. I'm a warm weather kind of guy, but a little bit humid out there as well. Humidity is 85%. Not really high enough to see any fog. Maybe a little bit of dew in your windshield. Might have to use your wipers one time. But other than that, it is humid enough that we're going to start seeing some clouds start picking up today. And that's going to stick with us all week long because look at your future clouds and radar for today with that tropical low that is right down here. Actually, right, you can't see it way down a little bit further south off of our coast. That's going to bring us some mostly sunny skies in the morning time before sometime in the early to mid afternoon time. I'm thinking 2, 3 or 4 p.m. We're going to start picking up to some partly cloudy and then mostly cloudy skies all the way through the rest of the evening tonight and all the way into tomorrow and all the way through the rest of this week. And with that sun picking through the clouds only in the morning time and a little bit in the afternoon as well. It's going to be a nice day today. We're looking at about we're looking for about 72 today in Portland, uh, Victoria, about the same thing in Quero, maybe 73 for a moment or so, and about 71, I'm thinking, for the high in Port Lavaca. Before the clouds and the northeasterly wind continuing tonight, going to bring lows overnight in the low 50s. Some might see upper 40s, kind of like what we're seeing this morning. But in the background, it will be a tad bit breezy out there, just a tad bit. Wind gusting up about 20 miles an hour at times with that low down there, and we're going to look at that coming up later on sunrise, as well as the rain chances picking up, and so are the clouds.
crossroads. They're still going strong with five teams still remaining. Let's talk about a team whose season recently ended, but it's still important to note that they should hold their heads up high. I'm talking about the Calhoun Sandcrabs taking on Lavernia. The Sandcrabs went into this game as somewhat of a favorite. Remember, they beat this exact same team in the regular season with two points. Calhoun's rushing offense was up going early thanks to Derek Salinas. This action was going early on a Black Friday afternoon at Katy Legacy Stadium. Lavernia was able to get some rushing offense of their own going as well. Here's Lavernia's sophomore Ty Carter rushing it in for a touchdown, but unfortunately it was a different song for the Sandcrabs, losing in a close game. Final score 24 to 21. These words here are pretty self-explanatory. Hard fault. Here's a word from Coach Whitaker. Well, we knew going in it was going to be a close game. We told our kids that all week long that this was going to be a, you're going to find four or five plays from the side of this football game. It's going to be a one possession game. Uh, last year we beat them by seven. We beat them this year by the last second field goal. And they beat us by field goal today. So that's the way it's been the last three times we played each other. Uh, two good football teams that know each other very well. A big congrats to the Calhoun Sandgrabs on a great season and a playoff run. And But a team that will be playing this week is the, the Ganado Indians taking on Marlin for a regional playoff matchup. But that does it for your sports. Until next time, I'm Ray Robinson. The president signed a pardon for his son Hunter. Hunter Biden was potentially facing decades in prison. This morning, President Biden is en route to Angola after a holiday weekend spent with family on Nantucket, stopping briefly in Washington in between and announcing he's pardoning his son, Hunter. Hunter was convicted of lying on a form about his drug use when he purchased a gun and in a separate case agreed to plead guilty to tax charges. Biden argues his son's charges came about only after several of my political opponents in Congress instigated them to attack me and oppose my election. The president's decision is a reversal from a position he held for months. And have you ruled out a pardon for your son? Yes. The pardon goes beyond Hunter's gun and tax charges, also covering offenses against the United States, which he has committed or may have committed or taken part in during the period from January 1, 2014 through December 1, 2024. The chairman of the House Oversight Committee, a Republican, accuses Biden of skirting accountability. Democratic House Representative Greg Stanton of Arizona also criticized Biden's decision, saying Hunter committed felonies and was convicted by a jury of his peers. Biden is not the first president to use his pardon powers before leaving office. President Clinton pardoned a former business partner and his half-brother, Roger Clinton. President Trump pardoned Charles Kushner, his son-in-law's father, and just announced as Trump's pick for ambassador to France. In response to Biden's decision, Trump wrote, does the pardon given by Joe to Hunter include the January 6th hostages? Addressing a promise he campaigned off of. Trump has also promised to go after those he considers political enemies and has announced plans to fire FBI Director Christopher Wray, replacing him with longtime ally Kash Patel, who has vowed to help the president-elect with his plan for retribution. Putting his son in the Bureau of Prisons within the power and control of Donald Trump, a political rival, it was probably something as a father he needed to do um, to protect his son. Hunter Biden potentially faced decades in prison. In a statement, he said he will not take this decision for granted and will devote the life he has rebuilt in his sobriety to helping those who are sick and suffering. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to take part. We want to know, do you agree with President Biden's decision to pardon Hunter Biden? Okay, let's take a look. 46% of you say yes, and 54% of you say no. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. Victoria is getting its residents into the holiday spirit with the lighting of the HEB Christmas tree and the lighted Christmas parade. This year is a little bit more special as the city celebrates its bicentennial. Festivities begin this Friday with the lighting of a 30-foot Christmas tree at Deleon Plaza. The lighting will also include performances by Crossroads Jazz Combo and the Trinity Episcopal School Choir. Friday's Christmas tree lighting starts at 5.30 p.m. at Deleon Plaza. Then the next day on Saturday, the lighted Christmas parade starts at 6 p.m. Food trucks will be downtown and children's activities will begin at 5 p.m. The Port Lavaca Police Department is excited to announce Little Cop in the Shops is back for its second year. It starts today and goes on through December 23rd. 
Each weekday morning, Officer Elf will be dropped off at a secret location between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. A clue to the location will be posted on the Port Lavaca Police Department's Facebook page. And your mission is to find Officer PR Elf during regular business hours. Purchase an item from the shop and bring Officer PR Elf your receipt to Port Lavaca PD before 5 p.m. and you can exchange them for an official PLPD gift bag. The time is now 647 on our Monday morning, still to come on Sunrise. We took a look at why there is a pause in aid by the United Nations. All right, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Kazaa. Happy first birthday, Kazaa. You are a miracle baby in our eyes. You made it a year. We wish you many more. We love you so much. Love, Lolly, Pop. Kyler, Kenneth, and your dad, Kiana. Oh, that's so Keanu. sweet. Look at that sweet picture. <laughs> happy I first know. birthday, Kaza. And has also happy birthday to Delilah. Wishing you also a very happy 10th birthday today. Lots of love from mom, dad, and Isabella. Happy birthday to Doug. Happy 38th birthday to my husband, Doug. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy birthday, Mr. Doug. And he just wants attention. Singer-songwriter Charlie Puth is turning 33 today. Happy birthday, Mr. Charlie. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com, click the drop down menu, then click the home tab, and then you'll see submit your birthday photo. Okay, the time is now 648 on our Monday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today or maybe you celebrated over the weekend. That's right, or over the weekend. Happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, Crossroads. I'm sure you've been hearing me talking about this tropical low pressure system that's right off of our coast. You're probably wondering, what is that? Well, the good news is that nothing is going to form out of this. We're not talking about a tropical depression or a storm or a hurricane. Nothing like that is coming our way. But what is coming our way is this what we call, we're going to call it a tropical, a low, a tropical low pressure system because it's not strong enough to become a depression and it will not become strong enough to become a depression. But you can see here just off, just southeast of Brownsville, we're talking like 50 to 100 miles. You're looking at the next 48 hours radar and satellite loop. But you'll notice right down there, like I was saying, just off the coast of Brownsville and maybe eastern of Mexico, uh, east, east Mexico border as well. There's a little spin up that happens right here, right with the little plague in here, right here. And these lines right here are actually lines of constant pressure. So there's a little bit of a deepening in pressure right there right before it makes landfall tomorrow. And that system making landfall tomorrow is going to bring us some cloud cover and some rain chances for the rest this week. But before that makes landfall, it is going to be a bit breezy out there today. So if you're going down the waters, I might make sure to please be careful. Waves are going to be a little bit choppy out there with your gust up to 25, maybe even 30 knots at time. The water's still a little warm, starting to cool off though, back down to the 60s and the mid 70s. But the rainfall totals for the next five days, here we go. You can see we're going to pick up a solid inch, maybe two inches for some of us. Most of us are going to see less than that, maybe half an inch to an inch. But if you like that tropical low system, uh, get us giving us some rain, take another one because we're going to have another front coming on Thursday night and that's going to bring us another low sometime later in the week. But we're going to look at all that coming up later on Sunrise. The UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has halted aid deliveries through the main crossing point between Israel and Gaza following the looting of aid trucks. The difficult decision to stop deliveries comes at a time when hunger is rapidly deepening. The humanitarian operation in Gaza had become unnecessarily impossible, citing hurdles from Israeli authorities and political decisions to restrict the amounts of aid as compounding factors in the breakdown of law and order in the besieged strip. The White Helmets, a volunteer rescue group in Syria, says joint Russian and Syrian strikes on Sunday killed several people, including women and children. Organization members searched for life amid the devastation left following airstrikes by Syrian warplanes. As the White Helmets reported on social media, their teams rescued a woman from beneath the rubble in a neighborhood. A search and rescue continues for other victims of the blast. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. The House Task Force investigating the assassination attempts on the president-elect have an update. The House Task Force investigating the assassination attempts on President-elect Donald Trump is set to hold its last hearing on Thursday. It marks the close of several months of work, with much of it being kept out of the public eye. 
as this session of Congress nears its end. Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Roe will be the sole witness at the Thursday morning hearing on Capitol Hill. After the hearing, the bipartisan group of lawmakers will finalize the report and move to make it public. An investigation is underway after the mayor of a small town in South Carolina died. George Gardner died Tuesday on a highway in Darlington County just weeks after being re-elected. Initial reports say Gardner was driving an SUV when he veered over the center lane and hit a tractor trailer head on. The county coroner said a sheriff's deputy was following Gardner at the time of the crash for his own safety, but it's unclear why Gardner needed protection. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division confirms it was investigating Garner at the time of the crash. Garner's death came just five days after his entire police force quit. Holiday travel caused a major traffic jam at DFW Airport over the weekend. Officials say the traffic is normal now, but cars were bumper to bumper at the airport on Sunday night with slow moving traffic. The International Parkway was backed up in both directions and all terminals were affected by the jam. It's, oh, it's estimated that over 5 million people flew over the Thanksgiving holiday. Join Affectionate Arms for a special Christmas open house and silent auction fundraiser. They're at 3802 John Stockbauer. Stop by on Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. for the chance to support a wonderful cause by giving a donation. Call 361-578-9067 or 361-655-4468 to learn more. Cucumbers distributed to more than 24 U.S. states and Canada are being recalled after 68 people reported salmonella infections. Read this story on our website, crosswordstoday.com. We want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crosswords Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crosswords Today Plus. Now this morning you may be packing on those layers, but toward the middle of this week, I think it's going to start to heat up, isn't it, Parker? Yeah, actually, we're going to actually be cooling down the other way. We're going to pick up some, yeah, you know, Carolyn's saying from well, we're actually going to pick up a little bit of cloud cover. We're going to have another front coming on Thursday. We're looking at here in just a second because right now in Port Lavaca, you're looking at a very pretty sunny sunrise this morning. A little bit cool out there if you're going to go see that sunrise or if you're heading out the door, I might recommend a jacket. It's cool to me. I'm a warm weather guy. 55 right now in Port Lavaca, but all across the state, we're looking at another lovely fall like weather kind of day. 60s and 50s in the northern half of Texas, southern half, we're looking at low 70s and upper 60s. We're actually looking for 71 for the high in Port Lavaca. Clouds are going to start increasing, like I said, early to mid afternoon, all the way up to mostly cloudy skies for the evening and tomorrow. 72 for today's high in Victoria, maybe 73 for Mount Rousseau. We're also looking about the same thing in the clouds and about the exact same thing in Quero, 72 or 73. But like I was just saying, we're going to pick up some clouds later this week, and we're also can have a front coming on Thursday and then we're looking right back into the 60s for the weekend and next week. Time to go raincoat shopping. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Look at all that rain. All right, Parker. Well, thank you and thank you all for joining us and be sure to tune in this evening by joining Shauna, Don, Maclovio and Max for 25 News Now at 5, 6 and 10. Make it a great Monday.